Flying is super hard to evolve. Within vertebrates, there's maybe four or five times that it has evolved in separate groups, and at least two or three of those groups were super closely related to the birds, so it's not like they were totally unique. Gliding, though, gliding has evolved a ton, and that includes in things as far back as the Permian, such as the wiggled swords. But there's also modern reptiles, such as some gliding snakes and gliding lizards, but also gliding frogs and gliding mammals, such as the flying squirrel, which all live around the world today in different forested environments. But there's one fossil that shows that the mammals actually took to the skies, not necessarily flying the way bats do, but at least gliding pretty early on in their evolution. Volaticotherium lived in the Middle Jurassic of Northern China, and its fossil really helps to show that yes, it was gliding, and that has a lot of interesting implications about the evolutions of mammals, because mammals weren't around for that long at this point. At best, they existed during the latest Triassic, so maybe 220 million years earlier, so about 60 million years before this animal was around. We're actually really lucky to have any fossils that are this good of Volaticotherium, and that's because small animals in general just don't fossilize well. The smaller bones just get broken up and damaged by the process of fossilization and burial, and they're more likely to be scavenged, so we really don't have great fossils of most of them. This one, though, is pretty good. It actually is even somewhat articulated. Articulation just means that the bones are the way they would have been when it was a living animal. So, for example, you can look at some of the limb bones and see the radius and ulna right next to one another. But some of the vertebra are starting to fall out of place. Volaticotherium comes from the Dao Hugo bed of the Hai Feng Go formation, which existed during the late middle part of the Jurassic in China. And there were a number of different deltas, as well as many lakes that existed in this part of China at that time. Occasionally within the formation, there are coal layers, which coal layers are made by having a lot of plant material get compressed all at once, which really does suggest that this was a very, very rich environment, which would have had a lot of trees, important for a gliding animal. The Daohu Go bed also shares a lot of similarities with the later j hole biota, from which some very famous fossils, like the first known feathered dinosaur, Cynoceropteryx, have been found. But there's other similarities, such as some mountainous insects being found in both of these different formations, and mountainous salamanders, which today have relatives that only really live in mountains, which implies that, like the j hole biota, the Hengfenggao formation was actually also pretty high up in elevation, something that's a little less expected in most of the geologic record, because normally you need very low-lying areas to actually get those sort of fossils. If this was at high elevation, that's really good though, because it helps to show us a very unique part of China's ecosystem in the distant past. There was also volcanism in the area, and pretty big and significant layers of that volcanism, by which I mean there were massive explosions that released a lot of ash, which then could have fallen from the sky, and settled into layers called tuff, T-U-F-F, -F, a type of rock made by compressed volcanic ash. This would have had pretty significant environmental implications, because it also means that some of that volcanism may have influenced those high altitude lakes, especially by making the bottom layers of them very, very low in oxygen. Meaning when something like Volaticotherium fell into the lake and sank to the bottom, it wasn't going to be eaten by anything because there wasn't enough oxygen for anything to eat it. It's part of what let the fossil become so well preserved. In fact, it was so well preserved, you can see the patagium, which is the gliding membrane similar to those you see in flying squirrels today. Except it actually not be that similar to a flying squirrel, simply because it would have been even more expansive. This would mainly be by stretching over the fingers and also to at least the base part of the tail, something we see in modern day colugos, which are very strange primate relatives that are gliding in forests in Southeast Asia today. It's a really strange animal, and it seems like Volaticotherium used a similar strategy to get between the trees. Being from the late part of the Middle Jurassic, this was pretty quickly after the first mammals had evolved, and we know Volaticotherium was a mammal based on the single large jawbone, as well as the fur that was found on the Patagium, so really good evidence that it was a mammal. But the first mammals, at best, evolved during the late Triassic, so maybe around 200 million years ago, making this probably only about 40 million years after that first evolution of the mammals. More realistically, it may have only been 10 million years after the first mammals actually evolved. There is still a lot of debate about this, for when the first thing that's related to mammals actually became and evolved into a mammal with mammalian traits, the single jawbone, fur, the complex inner ear, 
that debate's going to be going on for a while. But the fact that we don't see other mammals really taking to the sky until almost 110 million years later, with the bats 55 million years ago, really helps to highlight how strange it is that Philatic Ethereum got to the air so quickly. It's pretty strange to see. As for more specifically what kind of mammal it was, early on there wasn't a lot of consensus. It's just kind of, it's some sort of early mammal. But future research, particularly on the related animal, Argenconodon, coming from Argentina, researchers were able to really place it as a group of these early mammals. Specifically the group Eutriconodonta, which would have included some badger-sized animals like Repenomammus, which one fossil suggests may have fed on dinosaurs larger than itself, but there is still some question about the legitimacy of that fossil. Argentoconodon and Velaticotherium, though, would have been smaller than a badger size, and also more adapted for living in the trees rather than underneath them, so it was still a different group. However, Argentoconodon also had three very sharp cusps on its teeth, as well as some features of the femur that do suggest it may have also had a similar membrane for gliding. And more importantly though, those teeth helped to place both of these animals into the group Triconodontidae, which is a group of now extinct mammals that seem to have done pretty well at least early on in their evolution. The tooth traits though helped researchers to identify another potential relative, Ichthyoconodon, which came from marine sediments in Morocco. Knowing the very delta-filled and lake-filled environment where Philatocotherium lived, as well as the largely lake-filled environment where Argentoconodon came from, it helps to suggest that these animals were really good at living around water, but in the trees around water, potentially even near the ocean. There are some rock formations, though, in the United States that could have potentially held some relatives of these. However, it seems like at least the Morrison formation from the late Jurassic, so a bit after Bolaticotherium, but between it and Ichthyoconodon, may have actually potentially held some of these. But it also seems like that formation was a more semi-arid floodplain, so potentially not as densely forested as some of these other environments. Again, potentially hinting at the fact that maybe these animals were really well adapted to dense forests, but specifically around large bodies of water. So it seems like for the Volatecotheres, this was a pretty successful lifestyle, living in the trees, gliding from branch to branch, and catching insects in the trees, and then using those very pointed teeth to help break up the hard carapaces of those insects. Unfortunately though, there is something else waiting in the wings that seems to have knocked them off their perch. And by that I mean the birds. Birds had at best only really just evolved by the time of Volatecotherium and from what we know, they were pretty widespread during the later parts of the Cretaceous. And Ichthyoconodon is the latest known Volaticothere, and it comes from the earliest Cretaceous, right when birds were really starting to diversify. What this means is maybe they were successful for a time, but birds showed up and changed the environment enough that they couldn't handle it. So the Volaticotheres, and in particular Volaticotherium, the best known one, were just kind of a foreshadowing of what was to come with later mammals going into the air, including the bats, but also the dozens of different gliding mammals that are around the world today, where there's gliding marsupials and rodents and primate relatives. There's no reason to think that there were others in the fossil record that we just don't have. Again, small animals don't fossilize well. But unfortunately for them, the birds came in, and now we don't have the first group of mammals that actually took to the air.